Hey everyone, ironically, for the second review in a row, I'm going ghost and I'm going to be completely transparent with you all. And no, I did not plan it this way. But I need to inform you all that Coffee Crisis was provided to me for free by Mega Cat Studios. Meow. So let's grab our tube TVs, our Sega Genesis, our retro game cart, and head down to that one coffee shop that I'm sure that none of you have ever heard about. Order us a frilly drink and play some Coffee Crisis. You know, on second thought, dragging all this gear out here is way too much work. And I don't even like coffee or own a trendy scarf. Plus, I'm, I'm lazy, like really lazy. So screw it. We're just gonna play the Steam version, you know, at home, not bumming off the local Wi-Fi while we take up space not ordering anything. Which actually brings me to my first point. Coffee Crisis is an indie game that is available on Steam, and yes, no joke, the Sega Genesis, which you can order from their site. But seeing as how I'm going to be playing the Steam version, because that's the one I have, that's the version I'll be looking at primarily today. Though I have played the Genesis version at MAGFest for like 5 minutes, and from what I remember, they're pretty similar minus a few features that we'll get into towards the end, as well as a few other things. So, if having a Sega Genesis port wasn't a big enough tell, Coffee Crisis is a retro throwback. From its graphics, its sound, its characters, and even its story, with the entire plot coming off as a bad 90s action romp. Aliens have come to steal all of Earth's coffee, Wi-Fi, and rock and roll. It's up to our two punk rock baristas to stop them, because, uh, the 90s, I think. Was, was there Wi-Fi in the 90s? I actually don't know. Eh, but who cares? It has its charm. And really, how can we not relate to these characters? I mean, they have a very important choice to make. Customer service, fight aliens. Customer service, fight aliens. And hey, they're not the first ones to make that call. Jokes aside, the story does feel rushed, or at the very least abridged, just making excuses to move from one locale to the next with little rhyme or reason. But it is a retro style arcade beat em up, so eh, the story doesn't really matter. I mean, no one questions why Krang steals the Statue of Liberty. By the by, it's because it gives the Technodrome a nice homey feel. No, what really matters is that, unfortunately, the rest of the game also feels abridged. Coffee Crisis only spans across a small handful of levels, with most, aside from the coffee hallucination level a la The Simpsons Arcade game, taking place in the studio's hometown of Pittsburgh, PA, including areas like the stadium, one of its many, many bridges, and if this street is the one I think it is, well then I have a pretty good idea of what coffee shop this game's store is based on. You hipsters. Also, minus 10 points for a lack of an elevator level. Every beat-em-up has to have one of those. It's in the rules. But, for what it's worth, the depiction of Pit is pretty good, and the scenery really stands out. If you can't tell, I've been. <sighs> now, well, there are some more troubling issues with the graphics that we'll get into a little bit more when we talk about the combat, I want to point out one of the smaller details that I actually really enjoyed, the lighting effects in the coffee factory. With enemies outside of the castlight actually being harder to see, it's a pretty nice touch. 
But still, what easily overshadows this, and really the overall look of the game in general, has to be Coffee Crisis's main attraction. It's rockin' soundtrack! Excellent! The music in this game is awesome, and absolutely gets me pumped for some Alien Smackdown. I knew right from the title screen that I would love the punk rock soundtrack in this game. Or at least most of it. The game does have a parody of some country music that uh, definitely doesn't fit the mood, but that's kind of the joke. Though I'd be lying if I didn't say that some of the music for the mods doesn't work as well, often interrupting much better tracks and overall flow of the stage. Plus, the invincibility beat is a little too slow, though maybe that's just my personal bias after so many years of grabbing power stars. But still, when the music is rockin', it's hard not to get sucked in. The rest is really just nitpicking. But, sadly, the rest of the game's issues aren't. They're real problems. Now, if you've seen some of my other reviews, specifically the ones on fighting games, you'll already know that I'm not shy about the fact that, well, I kinda suck at them. And I can't really critique them at the level someone who plays at a tournament level can. But, you know what genre I've played just about every game in? And no, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, that's right. Beat-em-ups. I love beat-em-ups. And despite their shortcomings, beat-em-ups are just genuinely fun and a satisfying genre. So trust me when I say I know what I'm talking about when I say that the biggest problem with Coffee Crisis is easily the combat. It is, to be blunt, way too simple. It's repetitive, and it's pretty cheap. And considering it's not trying to steal all our quarters, that's a problem. When we really get down to the grinds of the matter, come on, that was good. When we really get down to it, Coffee Crisis is just a button masher, and really nothing more. And if your rebuttal is, well, aren't all beat-em-ups just button mashers? You're wrong, because the truly great ones are far more than just that but I don't have the time in this video to go over all of the reasons why. And this weakness especially hurts Coffee Crisis when being held up by today's standards. But hey, I know what you might be thinking then. Well, this game was made to work with the Sega Genesis. Concessions had to be made, which I'd agree with you, except that it's completely blown out of the water by the entire Streets of Rage and Golden Axe trilogies. But let's not just sling hate or make unfair comparisons, let's really look at why. First off, the two characters are basically the same with the exception of their super moves. The guy's is slightly better, so go ahead and choose him. Though the specials drink down your health pretty fast, so you probably won't use them too often. Otherwise, both characters have a single combo, a charge attack that tends to get me hit more often than I hit enemies with it, a basic throw, and the traditional but still very useful jump kick. Though surprisingly, there's no run attack. Regardless though, this moveset might have worked fine, especially with such a large number of enemies on screen at once, had it not been for the enemies themselves. Now I'll be the first to admit that one of my favorite aspects of the game is the large hordes of enemies that you get to fight all at once. There will always be a coolness factor to coming out on top when you're completely outnumbered. But unfortunately, the enemies just aren't that much fun to beat down. It's pretty tough to really get any momentum going as you will easily be smacked by the same enemy that you're currently comboing. Plus, there's not enough variety with these guys. You'll never really see an enemy outside of the shooters that'll have you changing your tactics or really being in any way concerned. Though I'll give some credit for not resorting to those generic thugs with mohawks. But sadly, there's never that feeling of being powerful. Most of the time, you're just going to charge into a crowd for a battle of attrition. Which, as often and as randomly as the health drops are, you'll probably win, though there's no guarantee. Plus, the way the health meter works just makes it hard to keep track of your life, especially when those cheap ass shooting enemies hit the scene. I mean, just watch as your health plummets faster than a local coffee chain when Starbucks moves in. But ignoring the cannon fodder for a moment, as that's really not the draw anyway, it's the bosses that are easily the biggest letdown, as they don't really stand out at all or offer anything that the basic enemies do. 
All I can seriously recall is that one of them has Pokeballs for eyes, and that another is just a low budget version of a part of the final boss from Scott Pilgrim. Which, by the by, is the game's worst example of the War of Attrition. Still though, I do appreciate getting to kick the crap out of a 16-bit Kenny Chesney, so that's fun. Though, with the way the characters complain about country music, you'd think he'd use it as an attack to hurt them. Missed opportunity there, I guess. Still though, I appreciate the joke. And while we're on it, let me shift gears for a bit and show my appreciation for what Coffee Crisis tries to do to fix the genre as a whole. I will adamantly stand against the notion that a good beat-em-up is nothing more than a mindless button masher. But I also won't deny that they can get pretty repetitive and fast. Which does help make the shorter game lengths work, as this game only takes about an hour to complete. However, Coffee Crisis tries a new blend to help remedy the genre's overly repetitive problem in the form of mods. And no, they are not the mods you're thinking of. Basically, the mods in this game are just random events that occur to help spice things up a bit and try to give every level and playthrough its own distinct flavor. Leaving the Genesis version aside for the moment, the Steam edition of the game can even sync up with Twitch or Mixer to let viewers vote on which mods will pop up next. And for the record, if I was the viewer, I'd always try to screw over the player because that's just fun. But with that being said, I haven't tried it myself since I don't really stream. But I have to give the game some credit for what is a really cool idea that integrates well into our ever evolving public gameplay style, despite this being a retro throwback. It's just a pity though that the mods really suck. Yeah, unfortunately this genuinely great idea pretty much just ends up being squandered since the mods have little to no impact on the actual gameplay other than a few tweaks to the aesthetics. Honestly, I couldn't even tell what the mods were doing half of the time. It just looked like a random Photoshop filter got applied to my screen, doing nothing more than annoying me or just making it harder to line up my attacks. Yeah, fun fun. As if it wasn't already easy enough to lose your character in beat em ups as it is. But the final nail in the coffin, at least for the Steam version, has to be the lack of online co-op. And look, I get it, I really do. This game is retro. Couch co-op all the way. And to be fair, this isn't the first coffee themed couple to drop that ball. Looking at you, Cuphead. But the thing is, co-op is arguably what brings out the best the genre has to offer. And the fact that Twitch audience integration took precedence over online co-op feels like priorities weren't in order. Like gameplay took a backseat to getting fame. Not a good call. I for one have a pal, ironically living in Pit, who also loves beat-em-ups as much as I do. But we couldn't play together due to this limitation. But really, I think limitations is the best word I'd use to sum Coffee Crisis up. Limitations, whether they be the Sega Genesis, Steam, or just the self-imposed limitations that come from trying to capture the feel of an era long past, they ultimately hold the game back. It doesn't take advantage of what's come before and all the knowledge that's been gained about what works and what doesn't. Nor does it really take that much advantage of modern tools to help that classic style feel fresh and new, like others that have aped that classic style. Personally, I think if this game had come out during the Sega Nintendo console wars, this would have been a decent game and would have probably gained a bit of a cult following. But now, really its biggest problem is that it just feels dated. And since no one has any nostalgia for it, it's just a really tough sell. With its biggest new feature kind of flopping. Sure, the story is just amusingly bad, and the graphics are fine too, and the music rocks. But that dull and repetitive gameplay just kills all that momentum and goodwill. At best, Coffee Crisis is just... average. It has its charm, sure, but it's not really enough to carry it. I'd say if you've got a buddy and the two of you are hardcore retro beat-em-up enthusiasts, like me, then at just $6 on Steam, this might be for you, but for everyone else, I'd recommend a stronger brew. Hey everyone, SpammerD here. Once again, I'd like to thank Mega Cat Studios for providing me with a copy of Coffee Crisis, a game that had actually been on my radar for quite a while now. 
though I'm sure they probably regret it now. But if you didn't and enjoyed my video, be sure to like and subscribe now before doing so becomes too mainstream.